Okay, solve each equation on the interval theta is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 2 pi, and these are trig equations. I chose these couple of equations that we're going to go over today because they have uh, parts of them that you have to really think your way through. This one actually factors out pretty well. Um, this is just a simple quadratic, so we can tell that we're going to have 2 sine theta, right? And this one algebra here times sine theta. We need two numbers that multiply to give us positive 3. And, but when we add all of these pieces together, we get negative 5 here. So we know that both of them have to be negative. And I think they are, what's it going to be? 3 here. I think it's going to be 3 here and negative 1 here. I'm going to do a little test here. Uh, 2 sine theta times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 3 times sine theta is negative 3 sine theta. Negative 2 sine theta plus negative 3 sine theta is, in fact, negative 5 sine theta. So I'm just doing a little test here. Now what we're going to do is this, because this is, is a quadratic. Let's set this equal to 0. We're going to use the zero product property, right? That any, If we multiply any numbers together and the product of those numbers is 0, then one of the factors must have been 0. So I'm just going to do that here. I'm going to set this up and say, when is 2 sine theta minus 3 equal to 0? Because these are fact, this is in factor form. I'm going to get that 2 sine theta is equal to 3. Sorry, is equal to 3. And I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and get sine theta is equal to 3 halves. And this, I hope, is where, as a trig student, you kind of stop and say, there's, so, there's an issue here. We know, by looking at the unit circle, that right, we look at the unit circle here, and we know that the lowest sine value is negative 1, and the highest sine value is 1. And this number is 1 and a half, so here we have no solution here, right? This doesn't help us. So I'm going to pull this piece down and take sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. And that's true when sine of theta is equal to 1. And sine of theta is equal to 1 when theta is equal to pi halves. So there's our solution here. My point uh, in showing you this particular problem is things to look out for on the test. This is not a possible solution, is it? So let's take a look at one more. This one is a little bit different, and the way that this is different is this. We have to kind of think of this in a lot of different ways. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to notice that we have tan theta here, and we have secant theta here, but tan squared theta converts well, doesn't it? And it converts to secant squared theta minus 1, and that's just a Pythagorean identity. Now we have this whole thing in terms of secant. And here's the thing that kind of bothers people. That For me, I, I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side at some point, and it doesn't matter when you do it. But what is difficult for me is to factor things that have factors, I'm sorry, that have fractions in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 2. If you see what that does, 2 times this gives you this, this, 2 times this is negative 2, but 2 times this gets rid of this 2 at the bottom. So we end up with an equivalent equation that's 2 secant squared theta minus 2 is equal to 3 secant theta. And that technique is called grounding, and it's just to get rid of the fraction here. So I look for, the, I look for a way to get a 2 up here so I could cancel that 2 at the bottom. So that's what we did here. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is move everything over because this is a quadratic. I'm look, when I look at trig functions and I see that they're in quadratic form, I usually try to see if I can set it up as a quadratic equation. And if I pull everything to the left-hand side, we'll get 2 secant squared theta minus 3 secant theta. This is just algebra. Minus 2 is equal to 0. <clears throat> From here, I start to do this same bit of work. It helps that... 2 is prime, so I know we're going to get 2 secant theta here, aren't we? 2 secant theta here, and we're going to get secant theta here. We know that one of our terms is going to be positive and one's going to be negative because we have a negative here, right? And I think I did my work and I got positive 1 here and negative 2 here. That's what I think I got here. So we look at this for a second. We have zero product property again. We have this into a factored form, so we have to take this and set it equal to 0. So 2 secant theta plus 1 is equal to 0 is the problem we're going to solve. We get secant theta is equal to is it negative 1 half. We go to this one, we get secant theta is equal to 2. And what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to go here and I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say 1 over cosine. This is 
why knowing your identities is so important is equal to negative one half. And we can see, we can do a little bit of math here and see that this is not going to work out for us. So this is not a possible solution. But this is going to work out for us. So look at this as 1 over cosine theta is equal to 2 over 1. You can cross multiply if you want and get 2 cosine theta is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2 and get cosine theta is equal to 1 half. Of course, that is true because 1 over 1 half would be 2, wouldn't it? So that is a possibility, and now we have to go and look at those values that make this true. So hopefully what you have is what I have is my unit circle, and I'm looking at those values on the unit circle that have, a that have cosine of theta equals one-half, and I found out that theta is equal to, is it pi-thirds, I think, is equal to pi-thirds, or theta is equal to, was it five pi-thirds, isn't it? Five pi-thirds. All right, so I hope this was really helpful. Be um, really thoughtful when you're doing your work. What are the possible outcomes for cosine and sine? Um, that was the first example in this one, just to be patient and to work your way slowly through the problems. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks for the support. And your comments are always welcome. Thanks.